There are some really complex systems in modern vehicles. The power transmission system, for example, or the clutch. But how have these developed over recent years with different trends in the automotive industry? And what do top experts say is the best tip to ensure that you are fixing them the first time and not leaving a vehicle on the ramp for an extended period? The belt is crucial when it comes to power transmission. It may not seem it, but they've had to develop a lot in recent years. Well, for Daco particularly, um, we've had um, the advent of our wet belt, our belt in oil, so that's probably a really big innovation for us. So um, that's quite a big, a big difference in traditional timing belt systems. So the belt runs in oil, the belt is designed to run in oil. This allows for the um, components within the system to be a lot smaller. So the belt is narrower and the tensioners and idlers are all smaller as well. So that obviously um, helps towards making the engine more compact. On top of that, we have things like um, electric water pumps, which obviously help to maintain um, the, the, you know, the um, accurate working temperature or the optimal working temperature, I should say, with the vehicle. But how is new vehicle technology affecting belt development? A spokesperson for Gates told us that modern engines are tighter, more compact and feature increasingly sophisticated systems, making access and replacement more challenging. Electrification and hybrid technology add further complexity, integrating advanced start-stop functions and high efficiency components. With the rapid growth of mild hybrid technology, the role of the accessory drive belt is evolving from simply transferring power to actively supporting hybrid powertrains. From passive to active power transmission, in mild hybrids, the belt now plays a critical role in the start-stop system and energy recovery, requiring higher durability and efficiency. So, do these developments in both belt technology and powertrains make servicing them more difficult? It's, it's kind of a kind of 50-50, if you like, or probably 70-30, in that the... the, the um, Service intervals are longer, so the belt life's uh, longevity is, is longer, so the belts need um, changing less often. But I would say overall, so um, the majority, it's more complicated because you have to have, um, again, some specialised training for some of the systems or special tools. So some of the VAG applications when changing the water pump, um, you, need, uh, you need to carry out a special kind of priming and bleeding sequence. The wet belt, again, is another example where you uh, particular applications need specialised tooling. So that makes it a little bit more complicated because workshops do need to invest in that tooling and understand how to use it correctly. So in some ways it's easier because there's less of it to do. And in other ways it's more complicated because there are more complicated systems that need uh, specialised training and tooling. When it comes to wear and tear items, the clutch is possibly one of the most complex and for customers, possibly one of the most costly. But as vehicles themselves become more complex, are these units following suit? Or with automatic transmissions, does that mean that garages have to learn more about the technology in order to be able to continue servicing them? Uh, what you might find is that when a vehicle comes into the workshop for routine service, MOT, whatever, a repair, that the, the, the technician might notice that the bite point of the clutch is very high or very low or it judders when it pulls away. Um, and then at that point, then they would then be advising the customer of, you know, what repair that vehicle needs. So um, generally, um, a clutch is what we would call a distress purchase <laughs> uh, because the clutch is either, you know, it's slipping, it's failed, some, something's happened there. Um, at that point, then for the garage, there is opportunity. Uh, a lot of vehicles now, every other vehicle on the road today will have a dual mass flywheel fitted. So it's an opportunity to, um, to test, inspect and replace that if required. But what new types of clutch technology have come onto the market in recent years? And what do technicians need to be aware of? We've seen a rise in self-adjust clutches in vehicles and in our range, we've introduced more. Now, the self-adjust clutch emerged to try and increase the clutch's lifespan and to maintain pedal feel and performance throughout that life. The next thing that come along and sort of revolutionized the uh, clutch industry is dual clutch transmission, DCT. It, it combines the 
efficiency of a manual transmission and the convenience of an automatic transmission. And what the DCT is, is two separate clutches, one for odd gears and one for even gears. And this allows for a seamless and smooth gear change without interrupting the, the power uh, delivery. And with a decline in manual gearboxes in favour of automatic transmissions in the new car market, is this likely to help or hinder technicians? So manual cars, we are slowly seeing uh, a, d a decline in sales um, on those on, on new vehicles. Now, what you've got to bear, it, bear in mind is that a vehicle generally has a sort of 18 to 20 year life. OK, and for us in the aftermarket, the sweet spot for that vehicle is sort of between 8 to 12, 8 to 13 years. So if you think of a vehicle that's being sold today, you know, we've, we've, you know, the sweet spot for us in the aftermarket is, is now sort of, you know, 13 years down the line, 10, 13 years down the line. So we know, you know, for, 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 you know, for the next few years, we've got good work in front of us. But whether it's the power transmission system and belt drives or the clutch, what are some top tips to make sure that vehicles are not staying on the ramps for longer than needed and that customers get that first time fix? So when it comes to maintaining the auxiliary system, obviously main, uh, inspection of the system is absolutely important. So making sure that none of the belts are cracked or frayed. Um, some of the new belts are made with EPDM rubber, which is, is a more high tech rubber um, component. And basically that wears more like a car tire than your traditional type of belts that would kind of crack. So it's really important. We Zayco actually produce a awareness tool that allows for measuring um, the, the ribs of the belt to make sure that they've not worn down. So that's a really good way to check the, the wear of the belt. So um, and also noise, any noise from the system, any kind of squealing or um, any type of tension issues can make noise. So that's really important. But also explain to the customer, get the customer involved with the diagnostic side of it. So, you know, get them to do a, you know, we, we, we'll do like a pre-visit. Just call in, we'll have a look, and then we can get everything in place for them when we get the vehicle in. So at that point, then you can sort of go through the customer, go through with the customer. Okay, yes, the clip, we have confirmed the clutch is slipping. Like I say, you can check, um, you can check the clutch fluid at the same time. The customer can see that it's brown, so, like, you know, advise that once we're placing whilst it's in just explain what this unit does and it, it is it is it does have a service life <laughs> um and the trouble is the garage doesn't know the history behind that dual mass fly well they don't know what the driving style's been like or, or anything like that just using quality parts you know it's an age-old thing buy cheap buy twice you you make sure you get yourself a good quality part a part you have trust in or is backed by a brand you trust or a person you trust, using that those quality parts will ensure a quick and smooth repair that you'll only be doing once. Um, also, if you're going to use quality part, make sure you're using the correct tool. Any any special equipment or any special tools that are required for the for the job, make sure you're using those. The power transmission and clutch market is only going to develop further as years go on. With mild hybrids, hybrids and battery electric vehicles coming in, there are going to be changes and it is key that technicians are aware of these and trained up on these vehicles to ensure they can deliver first time fixes every time. But these technologies are not all that complex. As long as training is done, tips are adhered to and understanding is there, then workshops have nothing to fear when it comes to clutch and transmission repair.